guys, Coach Sue with Physique Development, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why we don't wanna elevate our toes during an RDL. So in some of our other videos, you've probably seen us using these heel wedges, and they're just that, heel wedges. They're not meant to use to elevate your toes. Um, so with this, a lot of times I see people doing an RDL and they think that elevating their toes is going to help lengthen their hamstring more or give them more range of motion. And this is something where elevating their toes in this movement is more so going to be putting undue stress and pressure on connective tissue and joints um, and you're confusing sensation with tension. So there is obviously a difference between those. So when you're doing an RDL, if you were to put your heels elevated and go like this and think, oh, I'm getting more length in my hamstring having these elevated, that's not gonna be the case. And again, you're going to put yourself in an unstable environment, especially because you're putting your calves at a disadvantage. Um, and when it comes to movements, you do wanna make sure your stabilizers are in place. So that's when you might be doing um, another hamstring movement and you might say, oh, I feel my calves in that movement. That's A-OK -okay because calves are going to be a stabilizer of a lot of hamstring movements. So we wanna make sure our calves are in the movement to make sure we're stabilizing it. So something to actually help get you lengthened in your RDL is going to be getting your form down pat. So when it comes to an RDL, I'm just gonna use the weight I had here for a lateral raise. Um, you want to be able to have flat feet on the ground. You don't want your heels or your toes elevated. And as you go into it, you wanna think about a tabletop pushing into your hips and pushing back. So what I see is that people aren't staying within their active range of motion, and that might be contributing more as to why you're not getting your hamstring fully lengthened. So when this happens, you want to push your hips back, and as soon as your hips stop going back, that's the end of the movement. So we don't need to bring our lower body down, our upper body down more. We want to end the movement as our hips stop going back. This is a hip hinge movement, and this is something that you want to think of it more of a horizontal mover than think of it as as a vertical mover. So it's not, okay, I need to get down and back up. It's I'm moving back and forth. So with that, you do wanna make sure that you can either have a slight bend or you can keep your knees soft. And Alex has another video going over the benefits of doing a stiff knee versus a bent knee. But as you go down in the movement, pushing your hips back, having this be your end range of motion. Another thing is as you go lower down, that's going to put your lower back in a disadvantageous position and that can cause lower back pain. So if you're feeling like you're not getting full range of motion, you're getting lower back pain, um, or you're feeling more sensation, these are all things that you might need to regroup within your RDL. And a great way to do this is to take video of you doing it, see where your hips stop moving back and say, okay, that's the part that I'm going to stop moving from now on. So again, a big part with elevating your toes, you're putting your body in an unstable environment and you don't want that to be the case. Um, and you want to stay within your active range of motion.